She was only 19 when she made her debut in Lakme Fashion Week and since then there has been no stopping. She's changed the face of the fashion industry in India with her quirky and experimental designs that break stereotype for the modern Indian woman. She's also called the Queen of Prints and today on this episode of Royal Fiesta presented by Behrouz Biryani ek shandar biryani ka look uthane i am meeting the very popular masaba gupta So ever since I saw your show Masaba Masaba I have been wanting to meet you I'm so glad this has finally happened so thank you so much for taking out the time Thank you I <laughs> have been meaning to be on the show for a very long time so I'm very happy to be here Thanks. Thank you Masaba yeah. You know so this is the show where we celebrate our guest's journey and we're going to be discussing a lot about it mm -hmm. So to begin with let's start by talking about your childhood Yes How was it where did you spend most of your childhood You know I spent my childhood traveling the world which i think is possibly the best case scenario <laughs> for a kid but yeah i i was born and brought up in bombay and okay. uh, i'm a hardcore mumbai girl okay in fact i can't be in another city unless it's for work or whatever for more than a couple of days yeah. so uh, yeah born and brought up in mumbai uh, you know i've always been a juhu girl Okay so uh, that's the neighborhood and whenever i had the time or i had a break from school or something like that then we were always on a flight somewhere because my dad at that time was very actively doing commentary and we would just travel with him you know we'd go to england and we'd go to africa and we'd go all over the place so yeah i always say i'm a traveling baby but my heart's in bombay you know your parents both of them come from different cultures yeah. different countries different careers as well one pursuing acting another one in sports what made you choose fashion you know fashion chose me i okay. never chose fashion and uh, it's it's literally you know when they say things are meant to happen yeah. fashion was that uh, i wanted to be a professional tennis player yeah. my whole life and uh, after that in the middle i wanted to become an actor obviously because i saw my mother do what she was doing but uh, everything that i did basically led me to the doors of fashion school everything that i did and it's almost as if my whole life panned out in a way and was designed in a way to become a designer eventually so that's how it happened i think i was studying music in in england and that was also one of my passions i wanted to be a singer and i was studying music and uh, I was lonely you know how it is when you're young and you want to be with family you want to be with your friends yeah. so I left that course halfway and I came back to Bombay and the only one place that was open for admissions was SNDT which is a fashion which has a fashion course so I just went there heavy heart you know I wanted to do other things still but uh, I found my way there and I think in the first year itself I quite enjoyed it and then I said now everything has led me to this path so i may as well follow it and see what what happens and then 2 years later i never finished the course by the way which is oh, which is, is what it? people don't know <laughs> because um, i applied for lakme fashion week while i was still a student and i was like i've learned enough now i want to be a designer i want to do a runway show and that's how i landed up at fashion week and uh, my course was just left halfway and and you know i called them the other day i called my college i said guys please give me my diploma and they said you've not completed the course we will not give it to you this is as if like a month back so are you planning to go back finish your course to get that diploma certificate i mean i said do i have to prove myself <laughs> and do an internship and what not but yeah i do intend to get that diploma it's so important yeah well yeah. you have proved yourself to the world i must say <laughs> and have been a great icon to the youth but about how would you like to define your journey in the industry of fashion so to say i would also say that i've been very brave in in many decisions that i've made with yeah. fashion with my career i started without any experience uh without much support from my teachers back in college because they said listen you don't know everything yet and uh 
everything that I've done, I've said, you know, I'm going to do it and then figure it out. So I would say I've been, I've been very brave in my journey. Clearly, you were brave. But tell me, when you started off, Masaba, were there apprehensions and uh, challenges or thoughts like, you know, this market seems very crowded? And what differentiator would you bring to the market? That's a very valid point because it was so crowded. But I remember being an usher. I was one of those girls who used to help people find their seats at Fashion Week before I became a designer. And uh, when I and I would just watch show after show, right? Because you're standing there, you're just watching what's happening. And all I remember was that everyone looked like a carbon copy of the other, and everyone was doing bridal. So I think my agenda was very clear. I said, I'm going to fill a gap in the market. I think there's a serious gap for people who like bhari clothes, but they also want to be comfortable, you know, yeah. and they also want to be chic and they want to be young and modern and everything doesn't have to be like chunky, you know what I yeah. mean? So uh, I was very clear that that's what I wanted to do, hmm. especially with, uh, with ready to wear, because at that time, if you remember, nobody was doing runway fashion which was something you could wear every day so i think that was very clear also just revamping the sari that's how my journey started i said i want to make the sari younger and cooler yeah. and uh, it was very clear the day i started my business i said this is what i'm going to do and this is what i'm not going to do which is uh, too much of bridal well there's so much to talk about your endeavors and there's so much to take away from your personal life too but chali ab aapke royal milestones ko khas banate hain with behrooz Yum! Can't wait! <laughs> Aaj ki daavat, we would like to treat you with Bhairu's biryani and their range of delectable kebabs artfully balanced with exotic spices, golden-hued basmati along with a potpourri of elegant ingredients that will lift your day in the most majestic way. Masawa, you are quite a foodie, but now we are going to play a fun rapid fire with Behrouz with you. Well, we are going to test your love for biryani, okay? So, first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word biryani. Decadent. Mm, yeah. Okay. And who is a bigger biryani lover? You or Nina ji? Me. Really? I still eat it uh, once a month. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about kebab? So, do you like murk sheik kebab or murk malai tikka? Malai tikka because it's just yummier. And um, you have to tell me what is the process of cooking a biryani in a sealed container called? In a sealed container? Yeah. It just, um, it, it, it just like cooks in its own like... <laughs> In Even the name, there's a name of a biryani which is derived from that. Handi? Is it a handi biryani? No, it's dumb biryani. <laughs> dumb biryani. <laughs> <laughs> if you were yeah. to invite three friends from the industry for a feast, mm -hmm. who would it be? Like fashion or can be films also? Can be fashion or films. Rhea Kapoor because she's crazy about food as okay. much as I am. Okay. Katrina Kaif because I want to know what she's eating <laughs> to look like that. So I want to be on that meal with her. And um, Malaika Arora because she's also very fit but she also is a big foodie so. Oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I would like to be a part of that lunch. I know right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Biryani for lunch or biryani for dinner? Biryani for lunch, it's too heavy for dinner. Uh, what is the drink iron called in English? Okay, I'll give you a hint. It's yeah. a very refreshing, cooling beverage. And it's with us on this table. Chas. <laughs> but in English I said. Oh, <laughs> buttermilk. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Glotti kebabs are an original delicacy of Fit City. Lucknow. Very good. <laughs> What's one thing that's common between biryani and fashion? Wow, <laughs> biryani and fashion, it's all a big mess, but it's yummy. Yeah. Alright, mm. so tell us you're a biryani lover without telling us you're a biryani lover. I um, eat vegetarian biryani like and I put broccoli and beans and like all these healthy things and I kid myself into thinking that I'm eating a healthy meal. Well, it's got like so much oil. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a big biryani lover. I'll eat any kind. You give me like tofu and this sandar, beetroot or whatever the healthy stuff is, red rice biryani. Yeah. I, I try every kind of biryani to make sure I can have some. But Masaba, what I really want to talk about is, you know, you're one of the few fashion designers who's also forayed into acting. 
So how was it on the sets of Masaba Masaba? Is there anything that you would like to share with us? You know, it was um, the thing is I've always wanted to act, but I just never got the opportunity. I think, or maybe I didn't really pursue it. And even when Masaba Masaba happened, I didn't really pursue it. Yeah. It just kind of fell into my lap, and then I was like, yeah, sure, why not? But um, it was a very like I call acting for myself therapy. Like being on a set for me is like, it's like meditation. Like I really enjoy it, even though I lose my cool like a hundred times a day, and I get very worked up. Yeah. But I just find it so relaxing. Like being in front of a camera is really, really, really relaxing. Yeah. Like, yeah. But you did mention at one point that how you were really good at playing tennis, yeah, uh, music, and then acting. Dancing so, also and dancing. Wow! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you have the perfect recipe to be like a Bollywood actress in that case. <laughs> Get typecast, but yeah. <laughs> no, you know, I um, I really enjoyed the arts. Like yeah. I was someone who, even in school, I was always like, or oh, not just the arts, the outdoors, the arts, a mix of everything. Just yeah. doing something with my body, you know, yeah. something that really appeals to me. But I think out of all these things, I really wanted to pursue professional tennis. The rest was kind of I was doing musti. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. This was something I really wanted to do. But I guess life had other plans. I also didn't have that discipline, especially when it came to food. Yeah. Which is why I have a very strange relationship with food. It's like love hate almost. You know, where I'm like I love it so much, but I know I shouldn't love it so much. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, I I think I'm in the perfect place where I'm doing a little bit of acting. I'm doing a lot of design. I'm running a business, yeah. and I think that's this balance is what I thoroughly enjoy. You did mention something about typecast, you know. But do you think the entertainment industry is slowly changing and becoming more experimental with newer show formats, newer types of faces? But if you look at Bollywood actresses, like you mentioned, you know, at one point everybody had like absolutely straight hair. Fair, yeah, they would yeah. all look the same, yeah. and directors would always look for those features in a particular actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but do you think a lot of it is changing, or it's still the same? Not at all. In films, <laughs> it will never change. I mean, it might change. It won't change, but they might say, okay, sure, you know, you can be a part of the film, but you be like that other woman who's this character. You'll never be. Uh, The main lead in a rom com, you will never see somebody who's like completely outlandish looking, like someone who's just not a in typical Indian face, or not even a typical Indian face. Somebody who's even really dark skinned. I think Kajol, yeah, uh, was one of the few people who really made it as a mainstream actor. Yeah, and she made it way back. Yeah, so that's I think that's the anomaly. But otherwise, I find that the same people are cast for the same things always. The reason we feel things are changing is because the OTT platform True. has come yeah. in, and there you actually see the opposite. You see all the people <laughs> who probably didn't uh, or would have been sent back from, like you know, a, a film house's door because they just didn't look the part. I think they're all doing so well there. I'm so happy for that because uh, even even somebody as great as a Nawazuddin Siddiqui, right? I think they all get. Uh, They all tend to get typecast. He's luckier. Yeah. He plays a bit of you know gangster. He did some few love things as well, like a rom com as well. But I think everyone else gets typecast. Yeah. You know. But you have an influential voice, right, Masaba? Uh, what are the things that you do to 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 make your voice heard? You know, mm -hmm. be it through social media or any other platform for that matter, or even fashion. You know, when when we look at your models. Yeah. They are not the typical models that you would see otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. I think uh, through the brand, we're always trying to find ways to tell women that listen, you don't need to be a stick thin figure to be able to wear my clothes. Yeah. Uh, but I think what's also happening, unfortunately, Kamya, is that everyone is now like you're basically taking the plus size woman or the darker woman yeah. and saying, or someone who's got like like acne scars or a flaw or whatever you may call it. You're taking that person and shaming the others. So suddenly, a stick thin girl is now being body shamed as yeah. well, which is just so sad, you know. Yeah. And uh, I think I can by live by example. Um, even when I did Masaba Masaba for me, that was actually a big way to just tell people that you know what, hey, if you do, you know, you can do well without being a Bollywood star. 
you know there are other people who do well also yeah. you know and there's other careers as well yeah. and you can do really well for yourself you can probably have your own ott show in, yeah. in the future you never know but i just think that we're just very as as a society and and you know i don't blame filmmakers because the audience also likes to watch a typical kind of a woman play a certain kind of role yeah. you know uh, like i keep saying will i ever be cast as an indian maharani never it's not going to happen you know they're like what the <laughs> hell is get out of here you know so till that changes nothing will really change yeah yeah but i'm i'm glad that you speak about you know body shaming and that could be of any kind and a very valid point that today a thinly a girl has got lovely skin and has no pimples at all is like mm, you are not correct <laughs> I mean it's not cool hell? enough to be like yeah, you're this. not cool enough it's almost <laughs> as if everyone's just saying you know what watch my flaws because I'm the next big thing yeah but uh, it can't be a gimmick you know uh, talking about body shaming isn't a marketing yeah. trick it can't be it has to be a way of life yeah if you decide that from now on I live like this yeah. you mentioned about actresses I want to know who is your favorite actress who looks great in no matter whatever however you style that person <laughs> I think Sonam Kapoor Ahuja because okay. uh, she is such a great clothes horse. You know, she wears Indian very well, Western very well, so it's lovely. Do you yeah. also style for Nina Ji? Or Listen, you do. It's too tough <laughs> because she is um, her own best stylist. So sometimes I walk into the office and she'll just be there and she'll like be picking up pieces and she'll do her own thing and ye bana do, wo bana do, and she's done. You can't, you can't reason with her. She's her own stylist. <laughs> okay, and do do you both like to travel together? Have you all done that in a long time? That's or? our most favorite thing to do, especially okay. shopping trips. <laughs> uh, we love going to London together because okay. we really enjoy the food, the weather, the shopping. But we haven't gone in what three, four years now. Yeah. But in the time being, we've been taking short trips to Mukteshwar, where we have a house in the okay. hills. Oh, nice. Uh, we go to Goa once in a while. But yeah, traveling with my mum is my most favorite thing to do. So what's lined up now? We've seen this wonderful uh, series of Masaba Masaba. Do we have the next season coming up anytime soon? <laughs> yes, it's coming out in summer this year. Okay. Um, So hopefully between April May sometime you should see season 2. I don't know yet. <gasps> My god, don't kill me for this. But yeah, sometime <laughs> around then is when we're hoping to launch. Okay. Um and then there's like 100 collections. Okay. Uh there's a new brand which I can't speak much about but that's coming up in April May as well. Right. And um I am launching my YouTube channel. So wow. that's exciting and, and what do we look forward to in your YouTube channel So you know on my Instagram everyone kept telling me that listen we need to know what you do like skin care routines makeup tutorials fitness hacks uh my mantras to running a business and everything really But that brings me to an interesting question that Masaba you're doing so many things okay yeah. you are running your own business your own fashion line you are into acting now your own YouTube channel yeah you also have a very strong social media presence where you speak about issues that matter to you how do you do it all <laughs> um i really enjoy it i enjoy work more than anything else in life right. um more than food <laughs> but um i think i'm a workaholic i'm somebody who feels most energized most happy when i'm working on something you know and um I think I've become like that because over the past so many years I've discovered that what is that one thing that gives you validation and yeah. I think it's your work. Thank you so much Masaba. Really Thank enjoying you. sharing this feast with you. Same here. <laughs> It was yummy. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Thanks.